Hello mate, welcome back. In this video, we're going to start creating some of our game assets, which we have already noted down the things we need in our notes file. Assuming you've done the same thing as I have, you've created these notes for things that you mustn't forget. So we're going to jump straight into Photoshop for this one. So we'll drag this out of the way. First thing that we want to do is we need to create a blank JPEG or a blank PNG file, which we're going to use as an overlay for our notification screen and to do that all we're going to do is we're going to create a file 1920 by 1080 because that is the size of our game and we're going to simply use the paint bucket tool and we're going to fill it with black get the whole image and then all we're going to do is we're going to drop our opacity down to one percent so it's basically nothing there this allows us to save this as a png file which we're going to do now so we'll just go to file and we're going to go to export and we're going to go to export as we could do a quick export as png but we just want to check a couple of details to make absolutely sure that we've got everything sorted primarily we want to make sure that we've got a transparency we've got a smaller file is a bit we don't need this file to be massive because it doesn't contain anything it's just basically a blank screen which we're going to overlay over the top of our other screens when we have a notification pop up on the screen which will stop the player from being able to click on anything in the environment until they've closed the chat window. So we're going to go ahead and hit export and we're going to save this as our overlay underscore one dot PNG. So now that we've done that, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a dummy background or a placeholder background for our locations. And what I generally do is I just do something um, crazy and colorful. So I'm going to use my uh, brush tool here and I'm going to go with something, we'll start off with something red and we're just going to go blah blah blah, blah there, give that a moment, we just need to make sure that we're doing it on a new layer because as you can see we've got that layer is transparent so we're just going to plop that there and then we'll just choose uh, another colour, let's go for red here, go for a bit of orange down here, go for a bit of blue over here, a bit of purple perhaps over here Maybe a bit of yellow, we'll throw a bit of yellow into the mix just over here. Now I think we need a bit, a little bit more orange in this area. And as you can see, we're literally just creating an image that's gonna um, fill up the screen in instances where there is no location background. So that we've got something to show there basically. And what we can do is to make sure that these colors don't stay transparent. You can see the background through there. We can just use our paint bucket tool select white and then just do that there you go that's solidified that image quite nicely so now we can save this as our default background file this doesn't have to be a png this can be a jpeg so you just simply go file and you can go uh, save as failing that if you go to image or layer and flatten image that gets rid of all of the hidden stuff and just creates one image and then you can go to save and it will give you the option to save it as any of these files here which is what we're going to do so if you go ahead and do that and then we can move on to the next one the next asset that we're going to need to create is going to be icons for our top bar so the first thing we need to do is create a new image so we're just going to go new and we're going to create an image this time it's going to be very small 48 pixels by 48 pixels now we're just going to hit create and there we go, there's our image file. And we can zoom in as much as we want. Now we need to create three icons. We need to create a back arrow. We need to create a help icon and we need to create a map icon. Now you could spend time drawing these custom if you wanted to. What I've done is I've used the Google images search and I've just found some that I like the look of. So for example, here I've got a back arrow and you can just about make out what it is. I would strongly recommend, unless you plan on um, doing what I'm doing here for the sake of tutorial purposes, is just create your own, do your own. That way you're not gonna run into any issues with someone claiming that you've stolen their icons or anything like that. Just create these three icons here and make sure that they are 48 pixels by 48 pixels and that will enable you to fit them into our user interface. Once you've created them, I would highly recommend you use a transparent background again, and you're going to export them as PNG files. And if you check into our uh, top bar screen, so I'm just gonna bring that up now. 
The file names are listed right here. So you can use icon help, icon map and back.png files and they will fit into your um, into your game UI nice and easily. So go ahead and do that. All right, so that's those bits done. Now, assuming that you have been through and you've bug checked your code, by which I mean you've checked for typos and tabbing. Um, if you've copied me all the way through, you might have found that you've made a couple of typos, largely where there's like a dash instead of an underscore or something like that. They will come up as errors when you try and run the code. So once you've done that, you should be able to use the images that we've just created and I will just run this code here and we'll start it. Now what you should be presented with is your user interface with a background. Remember this screen, this colored screen here is only showing because we are in a location that doesn't have a background. And if you remember from our code, if I bring up our BG image code, that bring that comes in here with looking for a bg string equals bg string chapter which is a variable that we've defined in our classes file if we come down here we can go up to wherever we've defined it bg string chap okay so what it's looking for is in the backgrounds folder within the images folder it's looking for location chapter sequence if that doesn't exist it's looking for location and chapter if that doesn't exist, it's looking for just location. And if that doesn't exist, it shows us the background file that we've just created. So the only reason we're seeing this colored image is because the location that we're currently in doesn't have a background created for it just yet. We're seeing our top bar. Now, if we click on the show hide hint, you can see that our tooltips are appearing there over our buttons. We click on that and it'll toggle this screen on and off and we can drag this around. We can pop it in the bottom corner if we want to, if we wanted this to stay up on the screen permanently. Now, if you click on the map icon at the moment, it's going to crash because we don't currently have a map background image which we can use. So that's gonna be the next thing that we'll create. So we'll go ahead and we'll close this down like that. Happy days and we can get rid of this like so. And we're just back to this background. Now we can get rid of this and start fresh if we want to, but to be honest, there's not much point. Now, this map background can be literally any image you want. If you want a town map, if you want a Google images kind of map, you know, like a Google uh, satellite or anything you want to do, this is the image that's gonna be the background for that that's going to have the icons overlaid on it. So I would strongly recommend that you use something imaginative um, for your game. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the background for the map that I currently use in my existing game and that's going to be this one. Now as you can see the image is a different size and if you remember in our code we actually defined our map screen to be a different size altogether. So if we were to come into our code we can go to our nav screen and we can see that we're actually looking for an image that's 1200 by 794. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit the cancel on that one. And we can go to our file image and go to image size. And we're going to go to 1200, gonna unlink the image like that and 794. Yeah, okay. And then that rescales. Now, obviously if you're creating a fresh image, you don't have to worry about doing that step. You would just create it as 1200 and 794. Now, if I drag my map background onto this image, you can see that it fits a lot better. And I've given it a little bit of space around the edge because as you can see, there's a drop shadow there. So now all I have to do is turn off the visibility of that and we've got our map background. Now, obviously I'm using a notice board that's got Polaroids pinned to it for my map. You don't necessarily have to do that, but what my icons for my locations look like is if I drag one of those into there, as you can see, that works. And then I can, and then I've got similar ones for, diff, for each different location. And that's how I've done my map. You don't necessarily, you don't have to do it this way. This is just how I've chosen to do it for the game that I'm currently working on. And as you can see, we've got different places and each one of these will act as a button to transport us to a new location. But for now, we're gonna delete those. This is our map background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to export and remember, because it's got transparency around the edge, in my case, we need to go to export as, and we need to export this as a PNG file. So go ahead and do that and I will join you in a moment.
The next thing that we need to do is create a default icon, which we can resort to if we haven't yet created an icon for one of our locations. Now, obviously in my case, I'm using Polaroid. So what I can do is I can just drag one into here like this. Then we're going to hide this layer. And all we can have to do now is we just got to export this as a PNG file and call it something that we can resort to in the event that we don't have a icon, which if we look at our nav screen, you can see that it's going to look for a map icon, which is a property in our places class. I'll bring this up on the screen and you can see it's looking for Q.map icon. So if we go into here, we can come down to our places class. And at the moment, all we're seeing is this. Now we can actually put in a different value in here, or we can put a if rempy.loadable return value else. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to type in here if renpy.loadable return value. And then we can hit that. And then what we have to do is say return. We don't have to put an else statement in here because there's only two potential outcomes. And then we're just going to say UI forward slash map forward slash map underscore blank dot png and that's all we have to do now when we now if we save our blank icon as this then it will show that when we don't have an alternative icon and this again is just a placeholder thing it's going to create problems if we have multiple locations without an icon in that only the top one will be clickable but that's fine the point of this is just to us allow us to run our code so save that code drag it away, make sure you export this item and then we can test run our code again. Now that we've created that image file, if we run and test our code, if we hit start, the first thing we can have here is our hint screen. We checked that that still works, that's great. And then if we click on the toggle the map button, our map comes up. Notice that the hint stays above the map, which is perfect, it's exactly what we needed to do. And we can just click on, we see we've got our notice board here and we've got a Polaroid on it and it's saying, go to bathroom, click on that. It closes the map, it moves us to our location. And then when we hit back, it'll take us back to our previous location. It's that simple. Anyway, I hope you found that useful guys. In the next episode, we'll be exploring a bit more code. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.